God is so good. Let's stand. For the reading of the word. We just like to welcome you again to Victor Truth Church. We thank God for giving us a, another opportunity to break bread together here on this day. We've been coming from the book of Math, uh, Mark, chapter 11. This is a very familiar scripture. We'll start with the 19th verse. That's Mark chapter 11, starting with the 19th verse. And when even has come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw a fig tree dried up from the root. And Peter called unto remembrance, saying unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree without curses is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye received them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand in praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, and your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Today's subject is have faith in God. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name, Lord. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before you on this day, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, search us, Lord. You know our thoughts. Try us, Lord. You know our hearts. If there be any wicked way within us, we ask in the name of Jesus to lead us in the way of everlasting, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the ones that gather here today in this place. We thank you for the ones that are not here with us on this day. We ask you to bless and curse them now in the name of Jesus. And the one who will be watching this on Facebook, Lord, we ask you to bless them on this day and who is also who will see it on YouTube. Let your word go forth, Lord. Penetrate our hearts and minds that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for giving us this opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God is such a faithful God to every one of his promises. Have faith in God. We all have heard this before. If you have faith, as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move yonder place, and the mountain should be moved. We are familiar with this word. But the question is, do we have faith in God? Then the other question is, how many mountains have been moved based on our belief? Mm -hmm. It's so easy for someone to be able to articulate what's written in the word. But to demonstrate the power of the living God, that's a different story. God wants us to do more than just articulate the words that are written. He wants us to be able to exercise that level of faith. That's what we're talking about today, faith in God. Amen. Faith in God. Amen. Now, I know. Many people have heard this before, as I said. And some may be saying, what else 
does the prophet bring to the table this morning that I should spend my time and listen to what he has to say. And I want you to be reminded today, it's not what I have to say, it's what God is saying to us today and just using me as a vessel and I give God the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's where we are. That's where we are. So it's, let's recap. The book of Mark, chapter 11, and see what happened prior to this and why Jesus cursed that fig tree. Amen. Jesus know who he is. He knew what he came to do. And he had known that the God would talk and convey a message to someone of some people that own a cult. Mm. So when he got close to Jerusalem, he sent out two of his disciples and he told them as to where to go and where they would find this cult. He told them that to loosen, it'll be a cult that no other person has road before. He told him as to what to say to the one that would approach him. So that was for me, that was some type of communication that already had gone forth to the one who owned it. They didn't have telephones that he could pick up the telephone and say, someone come and know the power of God already told him that it would be somebody to come to get this cult. Amen. And he told them as to what to say. So the disciples said to him, to them, to, to, as exactly what Jesus told them. And they let him go in, and they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus was put upon that cult. That's faith. Jesus knew this. And then as he was coming to Jerusalem, you know, he... He, he had he already had been there to take a look and see what's going on, but he took a look at this fig tree. This was done in the even time. He saw leaves on it. He saw leaves on this fig tree. And he wanted something to eat. He was hungry, it said. It said he hungered. But when he approached the fig tree, he found only leaves on the fig tree. Amen. And I, I, I just like to take a look at that scripture because what he said is this. <laughs> he talked to it. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Yes. You hear that? Amen. He Amen. Spoke, spoke to the fig tree. Amen. For the one who's not familiar with that, you, you may want to just take a look at the scripture. Take a look at that scripture. He's supposed to the fig tree. So sometimes, you know, we, uh, we hear something, but we don't search it out ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to search it out for yourself. And this is the book of Mark, chapter 11. The 12th verse. It said, On the morrow, when they were come to Bethany, he was hungry. Talking about Jesus, was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, that's what the word says, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not adding anything to this, right? Mm -hmm. He came, if happily, he might find anything thereof, right? And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, right? Amen. For the time of the figs was not yet. That means it wasn't time for the tree to have figs, right? 
And Jesus answered and said unto what? It. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. When he spoke to the fig tree, he said, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And he said, his disciple heard it. So Jesus spoke to that fig tree. He told the fig tree that no man will eat off of this you from his foe forever. Faith. Faith. Jesus spoke it. Amen. So that means it must come to pass. Mm -hmm. Faith in God. Then it says, let's move down now to the 19th verse. It said, and when even, no, we don't, we, let's, let's, before we do that, let's, be, let's continue to read a little bit. I wanted to show you what happened when he went into the temple. We'll come back to this a little later. We'll show you what happens when he went to the temple. The 15th verse. It said, And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold dove and would not suffer that any man would carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught them, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house should be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. You know, that's a message within itself, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, some places, they have made the house of the Lord that's dens of thieves in that house of the Lord even today. That's another message within itself. But this message is about having faith in God. And we move down to the 19th verse. And when Eve, even has come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. The fig tree had dried up from the root. The fig tree, I want you to get this. The fig tree had dried up from the roots. I want you to remember this. The fig tree has dried up from the roots. Mm -hmm. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is riddled away. And it said, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. This is the message today. Have faith in God. And as I said, we are all familiar with this. Have faith in God. And some can go and articulate this without them looking down to the text and say it just like they've written here. That whosoever should say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be Thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Well, we know this, don't we? We're going over this. All over the, the, the Christian body have gone on this. That scripture. If when you pray, if you believe anything you ask the Father, it goes on to say, in the name of Jesus, he will do it or he'll give it to you. Anything you ask. So you can say to this mountain, 
move down a place and that mountain will move just like the fig tree withered away. He said, you can do that if you believe and don't doubt in your heart. And the question overhead question was, how many mountains have you moved? We know it, but how many mountains have we moved? Amen. The disciple was able to see Jesus to do mighty, mighty works, right? Amen. Mighty, mighty work. In the book of John, chapter 6, they wanted to know how could they do the works of God. And Jesus pointed out the work of God is how to do the works of God, to believe on the one who he sent. Amen. Now, now this question is that they asked that question, how can we do the works of God? It's to believe on the one who he sent. Meaning, belief is a work within itself. If you believe on the one who, who he sent, then you can do the works of God, it says. The works of God. To believe on the one who he sent. Do we really believe on the one who he sent? That's the question. And that's the question that each and every one of us has, must entertain. Do we really believe on the one who he sent? Can we really exercise that type of faith? Mm. We know we have a lot of mountains in our personal lives, right? Amen. Amen. And we pray about it. And we pray about it over and over and over and over again. And sometimes those mountains move away. But sometimes it seems like those mountains continue on and on and on and on and the mountain didn't grow larger. See it. See it. But Jesus said, if you have faith, you have to speak to those things, whatever those things are in our life that causes us those type of problems. We want to get over here, but however, the mountain continued to grow and grow and grow and manifest. So what must we do? We must ask some serious question. What must we do? You know, about the, the scripture when they talk about if you have faith, The mountain come your way and you believe. You can say to this mountain, move and go yonder place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, some of the Bible had changed that about mustard seed, talking about size of a mustard seed. It's not talking about the size of a mustard seed. It's not talking about the size of a mustard seed at all. It said, if you have faith, as a mustard seed. Well, they say, what, what, what prophet, where do you get that from? Well, because the Bible I'm reading from is that size of a mustard seed. Yeah, I'm looking at the King James Version of the Bible. It don't mention size of a mustard seed. It said, as a mustard seed. As a mustard seed. What it's saying is that a mustard seed has faith. Just like Jesus was able to talk to the fig tree. The mustard seed knows its purpose. And when you go into the book of Genesis, you go into the book of Genesis, you find that the mustard seed knows its purpose. Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 to 12. It said, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yet in seed, and the fruit yet in fruit after its kind, 
who sees is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yet a seed after its kind of the tree, yet a fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. The seed is within itself. And when that mustard seed go into the ground, right? A mountain is placed on the top of that seed, right? Mm -hmm. And then the mustard seed cries out for water. Then a germination process commences. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And a little root goes down into the ground. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then a stem peep up out of the seed and say, there's a mountain. But I'm going through. And the mountain give away. Give away, right? Mm -hmm. And then it push up and it received light. It said, Oh, this is good. And it cry out for more nourishment, so sunlight, and it bear fruit, right? Mm -hmm. And then the storms of life come like the storms of life impact us. And the wind blow. And it moved backwards and forth, but it get rooted, 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 and grounded. Amen. Because it know that it's going to have to deal with some trials and tribulations as it grow. Yes. Then it produce fruit. Amen. It buy a shelter. Mm -hmm. Food for men, women, birds, and animals. The mustard seed knows its purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just like he spoke to the fig tree, he's speaking to us today. But before... This about the mustard seed was well, even talked about. Something happened to these disciples. These disciples experienced something what Jesus told them. And we have to understand what was going on in their mind. Because Jesus explained something to them as to what they must do. What they must do. He pointed out the importance of forgiving. Amen. He pointed out the importance of forgiving. He said that if we don't forgive, the Father will not forgive us. Amen. But he pointed out something else. And something we may not have been overlooking. He said, if your brother come to you and trespass against you, he said, if he repent, then you forgive him. Right? But he said, if he should trespass against you seven times in one day, Seven times in one day. And then if he come seven times to you and say, I repent, forgive me, I repent of that. He said, you must forgive him. Amen. And then they said, help us to increase our faith. Because they, apostles, they knew how in the world am I, personal pronoun, going to forgive somebody who trespass against me two times in one day. No, he said seven times. If that person should trespass against you, if they come to you and repent, then you are to forgive them. If you don't forgive them, your father will not forgive you. Amen. Whoa. Amen. Amen. Uh. Uh. I mean, you must get this. Because we walk around playing games. Yes. Acting like we all about this and got all this unforgiveness in our heart. God wants us to be free from that. That's Amen. right. Amen. Uh. Can you understand that? Uh, somebody said, oh, he's just making up something now. I ain't read that in my scripture. 
The pastor don't talk about that. I never heard that kind of stuff before, but no seven times. Uh, you need to study the word of God. You'll find it. They ain't adding anything to the scriptures right there written in the word of God for us to be able to see and understand what is required of us. So he wants you to move into position to be able to talk to that mountain. Yes. Thank you, Lord. To be able to talk to that mountain, you have to know the way of the Lord, what is required of us. That's right. Amen. He don't want us to be play, praying with him when we go to a, down on our knees and pray. We're just doing something worse than him with our mouth, but our hearts are far from him. We have to understand his ways. That's right. With so much going on today, we can, we can say, oh, God... I pray that you, you would do this, or you do this and do that. And God says that I'll give you power and I'll give you authority to use my name. And anything you ask the Father in my name, I would do it. And that name is Jesus. But we want God to do it. The question is, what are we doing? What are we praying for? What do we believe? What do we do? Well, the scripture, Daniel write and judgment set, right? Mm -hmm. Well, where the judgment set? Well, the scripture in Malachi said, I'll bring judgment near unto you. You is this body of Christ. This is why it said judgment will first begin in the house of the Lord. So judgment is in the house of the Lord. We talked about this a few Sundays ago. It's set as a refiner to refine us and make us as gold and as silver. He said, I'll be a swift witness against the saucers, the dusters, the false swearers, and those who oppress the hireling in his wages. The hireling in his wages. Those who fail to pay people a living wage. Those people who believe in outsourcing, whereby they can get product very cheaply, whereby they can sell goods. No, we deal with social things. Yes, we need to deal with social Amen. things. Because the word of God says he, we deal with social things. Right. These are and those who oppress the hiring and also turn away the strangers from their right. You have power and strength to help them, but you will not. So it began it with us. That's right. And many people quote the scripture, if my people call by my name to humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. We're easy to articulate the scripture. But it said, if my people call by my name, that name is Jesus Christians, to humble. That means you can't think too highly of yourself. Humble yourself yes, and cool. seek his face. Yes. That means we have to study the word of God to understand his ways. Amen. How do we anticipate the governors, mayors, senators, people in Congress, the President of the United States to know the way of the Lord if the church is silent. Amen. That's right. If the church leaders are blind. Yes. Amen. To what's really going on. Yes. If they don't study to show themselves approved unto God, how are the leadership of this nation going to understand? With wickedness is abounding all around us, yes. and we close our mouth. Yes, yes. Because someone going to may get rid of our five hundred one two three C our tax exempt status, or someone may decide not to give to the donation to the ministry. Amen. If I should speak about this, yes. Mm -hmm. This is where we are today. We talk about mountains. We talk about mountains. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with ourselves first, of course. Yes. 
and getting ourselves in position to be heard by God so God would do whatever we ask. And we have to believe that to be so. Is that right? Amen. So here we are today. We face with mountains. The word of God is very plain, very clear, and very simple. But we have to have the love for truth. The love for truth. The question is, do we really have the love for truth? And we have to seek the righteousness of God. And we have to believe on the one who he sent. And we have to study the word of God to show ourselves approved unto God. We are in warfare. Yes. This is a spiritual warfare. Yes, amen. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that's in leadership that have not gone to boot camp. When you're in boot camp, you learn some things about the art of war. It written into the word of God so we could be able to understand what it is that we must do and how we must deal with our enemy. We must understand the weapons that we have. Amen. And the power that's been given unto us to use these weapons and when to use these weapons. And one of the things, one powerful weapon that we have is love. Yes. And also, the love of truth. Yes. Truth will <laughs> truth will destroy things. Amen. Wicked. Yes. It will light. We are light. We have to expose things and shine light. We are salt. Salt will preserve, but salt also will kill. Yes. So we are all of that. The question is. Do we have faith in God when we pray? Or do we allow thoughts to come in our mind and say, you don't deserve this, and this is not going to happen, and this is not going to happen, and those thoughts become so overwhelming, and we find ourselves doubting. Mm -hmm. This happened for too often. Amen. For too often. And this is what we're dealing with today. This is how wickedness abound. If we believe this, if we believe any nation is walking the way God would have it to walk and doing everything right and pleasing in the sight of God, then I will say to you, you do not know the way of the Lord. Amen. This is why we always must remember that we as Christians, we are not of the world. If we act as the world act, then we definitely not of God. There's no doubt about it. You got good and you got evil. You have some people who study evil day and night, and night as to how can I take advantage of some people to push myself up. Is that right? Yes. We don't know anybody like that. Well, if you don't, if you say you don't know anybody like that, then one thing I want you to do, I want you to look into the mirror because you just said a lie or you don't understand. You're blind and you need to be able to see. You know, when you're blind, you're blind. But once you, when light come, good you see, you're in serious trouble. If you don't know that you're in there, <laughs> that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But once you become aware that you operate in air, that is a different problem. Let's talk about some mountains now. Okay. 
In your own secret closet, you can go to God. You can talk about your personal mountains. And God would hear that. And then you say, God, help me to work out some things in my personal life so I can get to the point where I can acknowledge you in, in some of my ways. Oh, all my ways. Wait a minute. Now. All my ways, I'm going to acknowledge God in all my ways. In everything I do, what I say, what I speak, I'm going to acknowledge God in all my ways. That's what we want, he wants us to do. And the question, the real question is, do we really acknowledge God in all our ways? Let me answer it for you. No. Amen. Plain and simple. Amen. No, it doesn't happen. Yes. But it can happen. Yes. Through the power of the Holy Spirit to acknowledge him in all our ways. That's where he wants us to be. If we know the weapons that he has for us and the benefits, we talk about the benefits. We're not going to go into all the list of benefits because of the end of the list of benefit that God has for us in this process. We're talking about having faith in God. And we're going to talk about some mountains. And I said that if you want to do when you deal with your personal, mount, personal mountains, you have to go to God in prayer so you can deal with yourself in that way. But let's talk about some other mountains. The world is in a state of crisis now. I'm going to talk about two mountains. I'm going to talk about the state that the world is in. Then I'm the other mountains I'm going to talk about is the body of Christ. The, what's creating this division within the body. And let's deal with what's going on in the world today. We have a mountain before us. And this mountain that the world is faced with it was a mountain that built with, with lies, mm -hmm. deceit, lies upon lies, fear, oppression, people not having the opportunity to do what God has given them to do, to put their faith in God. They want people to not to trust God. And they want to even inject people with something that, that, that they... The people resist in that process there. Oh, there he go. There he go. He talking about COVID-19 and what's going on in for this right here. I have heard enough about that. But God wants you to know truth. Yes. God wants truth to go forth for a mountain to come down. I said this before. God created mankind in his image. And God did not make a mistake when he created mankind. Amen. God does not want mankind to walk around forever with masks on his face or her face whereby they cannot come in contact with one another, Amen. fearful Amen. of the coming in contact with one another. Amen. Nor did God create mankind whereby we must be poked in our arm every six months. To, to live. God did not do that. That's right. God wants us to understand there's truth. But mankind, and it's unfortunate, God has outstanding scientists, doctors. He given them skills. But if you're a scientist, a doctor, you have to, it's imperative that you consider all data. You cannot consider all data when you have People on this side of the camp that have information that God blessed with, and you deny them the opportunity to present information that they have. You discount that because you're in a position of power. That's what has gone on here. Mm -hmm. But God has blessed all of them with information. But power, to begin power, they do all kind of wicked things. So now you have a, a mountain of lies. Right. Compacted onto that particular process, placing us in position where we are fearful. And people know different things, and they've been afraid. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Because when you start to listen, all those different things. Do you have that type of faith? What happened? 
what happened to that fig tree? The word says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. For the love of money, the root of all evil. And the fig tree was dried up from where? From the root. Truth come forth. Truth will dry up the money flow yes, to the people that are doing wicked things. Yes, <laughs> Truth will dry it up. The stock market will plummet when they find that you don't have to continue to vaccinate people year after year after year after year after year and shoot them up in the arm when truth comes forth. You'll find you don't have to do that. Oh, come on. Where you get all that profit? There's some people on this side of the table. They knew this. And they've been articulating this. But they voice have not been heard. That's right. Their voice have not been considered. Now you can see it doesn't matter whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. That virus called Omicron mm -hmm. is moving in and in the many nation, you don't hear this on CBS, ABC, CNN. I remember one time, at the time in my life, you had programs like 60 Minutes Face the Nation. And you turn on those programs, you was going to get some real solid information. Amen. Today, it's all questionable as to what type of information you're going to get. That was, I've been around a long time, 71 years old. And you put that when... when Crunkart, I think his name, Crunkart, Walter, Walter, Walter would get on there and he talked. Boy, you could say, well, man, this is this some good information. When those people came on there, you said, this is good information. This is solid stuff that they're talking about. Today, it's all about politics, yes. money. And it's sad. That those mountains have to come down. You have to speak to those mountains. No, you can't buy or sell and you can't work unless you get this shot in your arm. And in some places, they even consider what they call critical care. You know what critical care they're looking at? That some people are going to have to die. Because we don't have the people to take care of everybody. So we're going to make a decision as to who receive what type of treatment. Critical care. Critical care. Oh. One state is considered now another state may be considered already in this particular process here. That's some serious, serious stuff. Mm -hmm. Critical care. Don't get me wrong. COVID-19 will kill you. It's deadly. It can kill. But we have to look at data. You have to ask questions. God wants us to ask questions about some things. And one question would be, why over here in this nation, whereby only 5% or 2% of the people vaccinated, and in this nation, you got 50%, 60%, 70%, 80% vaccinated, and they have 3,000 uh, of uh, 1,800 or uh, 1,200 cases per million on a daily basis. And this nation down here have only five cases per million or six cases per million on a daily basis. And they don't have people vaccinated. Scientists, doctors, you've got to entertain that. Well, faith in God. We talk about COVID. And the point that I'm making is this. God has a cure. Omicron is a blessing. It's a blessing. 
that your immune system is working that God has given us to help save people's lives. Men, unfortunately, in power, they will take action to impact that work. And there will be more variants to come as a result of this. And God, but truth, will come forth. People are speaking out. But who has to speak out now? The church has to speak out. The church has to get rid of the fear, take a look at the data themselves, and begin to talk about the data, talk about science, give the science the, 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 the benefits that they deserve in that particular process, and ask questions, and stand up against evil that have the love of money. That's what that message is there. What is the other message? It's about the church. The church. That's the other mountain. Our test is to make the bride ready. Right? Don't you agree with that? Mm -hmm. To make the bride, the bride ready. In order for that to happen, we not have to know who we are, right? We have to understand the power and authority that God has given us to use his name. Is that correct? That's right. We have to put our faith in God in the name of Jesus, right? And it says how to do the work of God is to believe on the one who he sent. We have to believe. We have to exercise faith. We have to know who we are. We have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. We have to go forth and speak truth. We have to do everything in love. We have to die daily. Oh, we got a whole list of things that we must do. You cannot give it all in one sermon and know that Jesus tried to. That's why he said you have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. The question is, are we really studying to show ourselves approved unto God? Are we busy attacking people over and over and over again? Do we work to please God? This is what it's all about. Working to please God. Now, well, what type of message is this? What type of message is this? This is the beginning of the year. Looking back, 2021, what a year that was. Hmm. Did everyone enjoy 2021? Hmm. Did we go through some stuff in 2021? Yes. Are we yes. looking forward to, to go through some different type of things in 2022? Amen. Yes. Don't we want God to bless us in 2022? Amen. Yes. Well, how does God bless us in 2022? Yes. How does God bless us in 2022? How can we be everything that God called for us to be? That's the scripture says, search me, Lord. You know my thoughts. Try me, Lord. You know my heart. Says there be any wicked way within me, then uh, ask, lead me in the way of everlasting. It's coming out of the Old Testament, but add to the, in the name of Jesus. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Don't you want to be led in the way of everlasting? Amen. Do you want to be able to speak to those mountains that come your way yes. on a daily basis? Yes. Do you want to have that type of faith to be able to speak to those mountains? Amen. So what do we have to do now in the name of Jesus? It said, believe on the one who he sent. Then if we believe on the one who he sent, we will keep the commandment. And we know what those commandments are, the two main ones, the greatest commandment, to love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all thy strength, and to love one another as you love yourself. So easy to articulate that, but the question is, do we really love God Amen. with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, and all our soul? Do we really love God to that level? And the thing is that we can do that. Do only through receiving the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do those things. 
We can serve God in spirit and in truth. Do we want to really serve God in spirit and truth? Or do we want to continue on praying day after day about the same thing? Yes. God, what did you have us to do now? God, how would you have, what is your final word today to this body on this day, Heavenly Father? Well, we know that tomorrow is not promised to us. Yes, Lord. But we have today. And God can meet us where we are. God will meet us where we are. Yes. It's imperative, though, that we have the love for truth. And we make up in our mind and our heart that God help me. I want to do better. Lord, I know that you've given me power and authority to use your name. I know what your word says. But Lord, I want to be able to die to myself. I want to get rid of some things. Lord, I've been holding on to some stuff. I want to die to myself this day, Lord. I want to be everything that you call for me to be. I want to go forth with the boldness. And I want to do everything in love, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the gift you've given unto me. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all the resources that you've given unto me. I want to be good stewards of those resources. Help me, Lord Jesus, to reprioritize some things. To put you first in my life. To honor you and worship you in spirit and in truth. If you agree with those, the summary I just made, how about standing with me now? In the name of Jesus. God is moving now. Lord, we're praying that you church our brother Randy now who felt in discomfort in his body. We thank you for divine healing going forward yes. now in this body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We ask now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless my brother now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch his body. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Move the pain and aches from his body now in the name of yes. Jesus. Let your healing verses go forth now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you know the desires of his heart. He want to go forth and worship you even more in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you for the healing already have gone forth in his body now in the name of Jesus. He know. He know, Lord Jesus, that you are a healer. You brought him through three counselors. Operation and Lord, He's here with us today. And Lord, we thank you now for the for the discomfort. Move it now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let him be able to stand up on his feet now in the name of Jesus and lift his hand up to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we doing this, Lord, because we know, Lord, you are a healer. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we know that you have touched his body now in the name of Jesus, and we give you the glory, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. Here we are again at Victory Truth Church. More progress. You can see the drive, the framing is up and it's all the way in the ceiling. This is the outline for the sanctuary right here.